Because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Save the date, November 12th. We're having our amazing Invisalign day with the best offers of the year. Not only will you get $1,500 off Invisalign treatment, you'll also be entered to win a $2,000 shopping spree with your choice of Amazon or Visa gift card just in time for the holidays. Please call today to schedule your free consultation for this one day only special. Your dream smile starts here. Some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light Legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Hey. Hey, you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Marksman! Have you been hurt? <coughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> But really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside the Crown Coliseum. I'm Drew Blevins, delighted to have you with us on this fine Saturday night in the All-American City. Tonight, the Fayetteville Marksmen open a brand new year of hockey, the home portion of it, as they take on their rival, the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. Folks, this game is always good. It's always close. It's always filled with just the right amount of vitriol and hatred. And last night, we got another great chapter of this rivalry. For the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs, this is a chapter that will be filled with highlights. They snap a seven-game losing skid to the Fayetteville Marksmen. They get their first franchise opening night victory, and they put themselves in a position to have their first sweep over the Marksmen in 2022. And that's significant because they did not sweep sweep the marksman in any weekend during the calendar year so far. And this would be a feather in the cap of Dan Bremner, who's been under fire for slow starts to seasons. He's trying to get things started off on the right foot with another win here on the road, seeing if he can take that show on the road with him and play as well as they did at home last night. For the Fayetteville Marksmen, there are going to be a lot of questions that have to be answered in this game almost immediately. Primarily, where is the offense going to come from? The Marksmen came away with only 22 shots in yesterday's contest. They got outshot by a 14 shots on goal margin, and that's just unacceptable for Corey Melkert. During his pregame comments, he called the performance, quote, embarrassing, and that's not a way the Fayetteville Marksmen want to start the season. They want to be a lot sharper. We're going to step aside for a quick commercial break. Coming back, we'll review the head coach's comments. This is Marksman Pregame. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Save the date, November 12th. We're having our amazing Invisalign day with the best offers of the year. Not only will you get $1,500 off Invisalign treatment, you'll also be entered to win a $2,000 shopping spree with your choice of Amazon or Visa gift card just in time for the holidays. Please call today to schedule your free consultation for this one day only special. Your dream smile starts here. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy-duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. We welcome you back to Marksman pregame. Drew Blevins alongside the head coach, the Fayetteville Marksman, Corey Melkert. Coach, last night posed a challenge for your group. What was the thing that stood out as being one of the most challenging things about that game? Everything. When you look at the rail yard dogs, you told me that that was a team that was always going to be difficult to play against. It was a group that Dan Bremner coaches well. Were you surprised that they came out and played that tough and forced your team back on their heels early in that game and through the second? No, not at all. I knew that's how they were going to play. You know, we spoke about it before the game. I think we have, you know, obviously we have a lot of high-end skill in our locker room with, you know, guys that have played at the ECHL level and, you know, played at some good Division One programs. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, they thought it was going to be easy and it certainly wasn't. And, you know, to be honest, they they took it to us. You know, I we were somehow still in the game in the third period because of our goaltender. Um, but we didn't deserve to win. We got what we deserved last night. And, you know, to be honest, I've never been more embarrassed um, to coach this team uh, with the effort we put out there last night. 
And you had been highly complimentary of Jason Pulaski and his goaltending. He comes away with 33 saves on 37 shots. Is that the lone bright spot you're able to take out of that game, or is there any other strand of silver lining that you were able to find? I mean, I thought, you know, obviously Jason played well. He gave us a chance, and like I said, somehow we had a chance with with 10 minutes to go. Um, you know, I thought, I thought Matt McNair was, you know, probably our, our most competitive forward. You know, at least he competed. Um, you know, I thought Kale List actually had a good game. Um, other than that, I, I did not see any bright spots. You are going to shake up the lineup just a little bit, getting a couple of guys back who didn't play last night. And, of course, the big news, re-signing Brian Moore. Bringing Brian Moore specifically back into the lineup, how does he affect your team? And looking at how you shake up the roster, what's your expectation from the group going into tonight? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I think we're going to have... You know, I take a little bit of skill out of the lineup and, you know, I insert some ge- some guys that I think care more. And to be honest, I just, it didn't look like we cared at all last night. So, you know, you insert a guy like Nick Mangone. To be honest, it's my fault. I think he should have played last night. Um, you know, so I take, I take you know, credit for that. You know, I think it was my fault. Um, Brian's obviously, you know, probably the best player in the league, but he also brings an element, um, you know, that, a lot of guys don't have. Um, so I'm excited to see them play tonight. And you talk about that toughness and grit and the wanting it to sum up. That's your word, compete. When you look at the competition level going into tonight, do you expect things to take a physical tone early? Is there going to be a little bit of rough hockey, or are you much more focused on the result and getting back to the basics tonight? I'm just focused on us competing, to be honest. I'm not worried about anything else. And To be honest, I'm not even really worried about winning and losing. Um, it's more... It's more important to play the game the right way because last night was inexcusable. So, um, you know, obviously, you know, obviously pro hockey is a business. So if we can't figure out how to play the right way, um, you know, I'm going to have to get some other guys in here that will. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. He's the head coach of the Fayetteville Marksman, Corey Melkert. We'll be right back with more Marksman pregame right after this. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back inside the Crown Coliseum. Drew Blevins alongside with you. I thought those were some of the more insightful comments you're going to get from Corey Melker throughout the course of this season. Normally reserved in what he has to say about his team and the way he talks about his group. I thought the two things that stood out in those comments were, A, he called his team's performance last night embarrassing, and B, that performance was so out of whack for the marksman that he's not even worried about the wins and the losses right now. He's more concerned about getting the team to play the right way, to play marksman hockey. Whenever you get a coach that says that, it's a red flag because you know just how far behind the curve that team was 
in the game. And that's exactly where the marksmen found themselves yesterday. They were behind the curve. And this is an opportunity for the marksmen to throw it all out into the round file and get right back to where they need to be here tonight. It's a brand new looking roster tonight for the Fayetteville marksmen. Kale List, Rhett Kingston, and FX Girard are your scratches this evening. The one that is going to be highlighted, and this is one that's going to sit sour with a lot of marksmen fans, is the fact that Andrew Lane has been suspended going into tonight's game. This was not a suspension on the ice. It was a two-minute minor penalty for interference, and it has caused a lot of heartache amongst marksmen fans that he's been suspended because it was a situation where it was a video that was sent in by Dan Bremner for review, and that's what prompts that suspension. And that, quite simply, is out of form and out of character because you go back and you look at the hit, an interference call on the ice, not because the puck wasn't in the vicinity, but because the puck was possessed by another player. The delivery of the hit was not ill-intended. It was a clean shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder check, and it's just a really tough, tough standard for the SPHL to hold all 11 teams to if that's going to be a suspendable hit throughout the rest of the season. And that takes the marksman to only having a handful of legitimate defenders left. And you've got uh, Kale List, who, excuse me, does have to go back into the lineup as a result. So I apologize. I initially announced him as a scratch. That would have been the case had Lane been able to go in, but that late arriving suspension has thrown a monkey wrench into the system. Meanwhile, for the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs, they're going to add back Dylan Raiden, who will make his season debut. They'll also have Brody Duncan, who goes back into the lineup tonight. He'll actually be part of the starting lineup this evening for the Rail Yard Dogs, and I think he'll be somebody to keep a really sharp eye on. Duncan's someone who's trying to earn his spot here, and I'll be interested to see how that all ends up shaking out. Folks, we'll step aside for a quick commercial break. Coming back on the other side, we'll give you our keys to victory. This is Marksman Hockey. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash to learn more. Save the date, November 12th. We're having our amazing Invisalign day with our best offers of the year. Not only will you get $1,500 off Invisalign treatment, you'll also be entered to win a $2,000 shopping spree with your choice of Amazon or Visa gift card just in time for the holidays. Please call today to schedule your free consultation for this one day only special. Your dream smile starts here. Some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light and to Greg's house because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Hey, hey, you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. 
Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Have you been hurt? <coughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Save the date, November 12th. We're having our amazing Invisalign day with the best offers of the year. Not only will you get $1,500 off Invisalign treatment, you'll also be entered to win a $2,000 shopping spree with your choice of Amazon or Visa gift card just in time for the holidays. Please call today to schedule your free consultation for this one day only special. Your dream smile starts here. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Hey, hey you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. We welcome you back inside the Crown Coliseum for our final segment of this Marksman pregame as the Fayetteville Marksmen are introduced to their fans for the first time this season. And this is going to be one of these hockey games I think that you're going to have a long, long, hard look at. And, and I think what you're going to see from the Fayetteville Marksmen is a hockey team that is poised to take an important step. 
They know what they're going up against. They know the opponent, and they know what it's going to take to win. That doesn't make things any easier. And let's go ahead and turn our attention to tonight's keys to victory. We'll start things off with the visiting Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. The old saying, keep on, keep it on, comes to mind because the recipe Dan Bremner had last night was one that worked against this marksman group. And I think that's something to keep a sharp eye on. If this is going to be a group that continually time and time and time again is able to be the physical team, able to generate offensive opportunities and capitalize just a couple more times to their opponents, Roanoke's going to have a great season. But I think the one thing to keep a sharp eye on here tonight for Roanoke is they don't need to get caught in a marksman trap. It's a Fayetteville team that might have a little less skill in the lineup tonight, but they've got a lot more grit and determination. Roanoke's a team that historically has taken more penalties than they've had taken against them. And that's something the marksmen want to be able to get back into, is getting on the power play, getting in a groove on special teams. But if Roanoke can stay disciplined, largely this is going to remain a strategy that's going to sit the same. Meanwhile, for the Fayetteville marksmen, I think one of the most important things they can do is get started early. That doesn't necessarily have to be a goal, but a big hit, a play that's close, ring one off the pipe, find a way to get something going in the right direction, in a positive direction for the marksmen early on. And the second thing is you've got to move your feet to play defense. This was noticeable for the marksmen last night and uncharacteristic of a Fayetteville marksman group. So I think you've got to find a way if you're the Fayetteville marksman to, to be that gritty team and to do the best you can to throw Roanoke off their game. For the first time in a very long time, the Rail Yard Dogs are the team that's holding serve. I'll be interested to see if the Fayetteville Marksmen will find a way to take that early, as that will be a big key in tonight's game. Folks, that's going to do it for us during Marksman pregame. Puck drop is next between the Rail Yard Dogs and the Marksmen. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Save the date, November 12th. We're having our amazing Invisalign day with the best offers of the year. Not only will you get $1,500 off Invisalign treatment, you'll also be entered to win a $2,000 shopping spree with your choice of Amazon or Visa gift card just in time for the holidays. Please call today to schedule your free consultation for this one day only special. Your dream smile starts here. Some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light and to Greg's house because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light Legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Hey, hey, you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Webb Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. 
Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Have you been hurt? <coughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. and gentlemen and welcome to the friendly confines of the Crown Coliseum in Fayetteville, North Carolina. This is Fayetteville Marksman Hockey. I'm Drew Blevins. I'll be alongside with you for this one as the Fayetteville Marksman host their arch rival to the north. The Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs are in town after the Dogs took the first of 14 meetings between the two teams last night. The Marksmen are in their home full colored black uniforms, black breezers, black socks, and white numericals. Roanoke in the road whites, blue breezers, white socks, and blue numericals. Mark Dungan is our referee. He'll get his started. As the puck is dropped and we are underway, sit back, relax, and enjoy this one from Fayetteville, North Carolina as this promises to be a fun matchup as it typically is between these two teams. Smacked up the near side boards. This is C.J. Stubbs who had a good game last night. Stubbs driving fires over top Brent Moran's head as Moran will get his first start of the season. The returning netminder was just inches away from making a team in Worcester. And now Brian Moore has a hold of Sean Leonard at center ice. He wails on him and that will send the fans into a frenzy. Brian Moore wants a little bit more, and now he's got Leonard to throw off the gloves. And those two will be separated by the linesman. And Sean Leonard now has words for the marksman bench, and that'll set the tone for this one. If there's anybody you wanted to see have to drop the gloves and go off for five early, it was Sean Leonard. He drew the penalty against Drake Glover after the whistle was blown last night, turned that into a power play goal for the Rail Yard Dogs that he had the primary assist on, and that 90 seconds of play ultimately encapsulated the whole game, and Brian Moore drops the gloves. First shift just 27 seconds into the hockey game, and Sean Leonard will have a seat. Leonard and Moore, five each for fighting. And now Mark Duncan is going to have a lot to sort out here. So here's what all is going to be at play in calling this penalty. A, was it instigated one way or another because the puck was still down in the marksman defensive end. 
did Moore start it? Did Leonard start it? And was it enough of an instigation to warrant a penalty and what would subsequently be an ejection? Secondarily to that, did Moore or Leonard throw an additional punch after the officials had gotten in and separated the two? And I think Leonard may be the one guilty of that if that is called, but knowing Mark Dungan, who is one of the officials in the league who calls very few penalties and is well-respected because of it, I would not imagine we would see anything more than five minutes for fighting each. Jarrett Cup will relay the news back to Corey Melkert. And Brian Moore is going to get an extra penalty here. So we'll see if that will be an instigation against Moore as there will be no ejection and that may be what it is. So the marksman will go down a man here. And on to the penalty kill for the first time in this game. And I believe this is going to be his brother, Kyle, who is going to serve the extra two minutes. And it will be. So the puck is dropped 27 seconds into the hockey game, and the marksman down a man as Travis Broman will take the puck in back of the goal, trading places with Mac Jansen, who scored last night. Jansen up to the point, slid to Nick Ford. Ford driving, holds the puck, a weak wrist shot that was affected by McCloy. McCloy has the loose change here, backhands into the middle of the rink and a chance for Matt McNair. Shorthanded, he drives down the near side boards as he's bumped by Dominic's Marcin Kavix, who I thought had a really good game last night for the Rail Yard Dogs. McNair spinning away from pressure. He's double teamed, fighting through contact here. He's hauled down, will keep going. Broman will punch it to Nick Ford on the far side half wall as Ford backhands into the middle. This is O'Day, one too many passes as it was intended for Jansen. He gets held up and now a chance the other way. Breakaway, quick shot off the goal post as Nick Mangone had cut free of everyone. Well, Nick Mangone is someone that Corey Melkert likes a lot and that's why he's got explosivity to go along with a lot of grit and determination. Out of Massapequa Park, New York, Never really settled in anywhere. Mangone was bumped off the Quad City Storm roster when they got the rest of their team back from ECHL call-up, signed by the Marksman right before the playoffs started, and what a piece he's been. Roanoke will set up from their own end as this is C.J. Stubbs. Pitches in back of the goal as it'll be controlled here by Dylan Radin on his first shift of the season. The far side faceoff circle, now a backdoor pass, ricochets off of Billy Vizzo's stick, and this will be backhand to the length of the rink as the marksman kill time. 20 seconds to go in that additional minor penalty to Brian Moore. Kyle Moore will be the one to come out of the box. The two brothers out of Indian Trail, North Carolina, welcome additions. It's the only native North Carolinians on this team. To the far side boards, it'll be scooped up here by the marksman as Vinny Rinda will send it up ice. This is McCloy who slides it near side wing for Kyle Moore. Kyle Moore walks into a wrist shot, just blows it wide of Brody Clays who earned his second start in as many games. This shot from the far side face off circle pinched up against his chest and he'll hang on. Brody Clays was not tested often, but for the good saves he made, and there were a couple in the third period that were his best, he still looked a little shaky. And I think for him tonight, getting inserted into the game early is going to be critical. He'd like to have that goal Andrew Lane scored back. And I'll be interested to see if he can get it. Here's a chance off the draw. They score! It's D.J. Jerome on the set play off the faceoff, and the marksman draw first blood. Well, D.J. Jerome was all around the puck yesterday, lined up on the inside wing, and the native of Lethbridge, Alberta, is going to get his first goal of the season. We'll have the scoreline for you in a moment. 
But that's how the marksman needed to start. And they have the rail yard dogs on their heels. Here's another turnover right in front of the net. Everybody sweeping at it, put toward the goal mouth. And Mac Jansen comes back to save the day as that puck was just hanging on to the stick of Austin Alger in his first game as a marksman. Into the near side corner now. Nick Ford will get it for the rail yard dogs. It is an even strength marker for Fayetteville that comes on the back of another strong penalty kill effort. It is DJ Jerome's goal. And there was not another assist announced, and I'm sure that is a mistake as someone had to get the puck there. Here's the centering pass that goes over the stick of Jarrett Cup. And now the rail yard dogs will get it out to the far side board. Slapped in onto Moran. He'll punch it to Drayson Pears. Pears sends it to the near side boards for Matt McNair as he's separated from the puck by C.J. Stubbs. McNair will get back to it, sending it to the far wing as the marksmen try to loft it into the attacking zone. They cannot. And now Nenadal has a break down the far boards. Josh Nenadal curling in the backhand. Moran makes the save. The rebound in front. Oh, Brett Moran, huge as he got the rebound. And now we're going to get a scuffle. Moran covering the puck. And Drake Glover has a rail yard dog accosted on the end boards. It's Brady Hepner who's been escorted to the end wall. Man, oh man. That's where the marksman got burned yesterday was those turnovers and transition chances. DJ Jerome had a bad turnover that led to the fourth goal. That time, Nenadol, who isn't the speediest of skaters, got in, lifted a really competitive backhand shot onto Moran. But the rebound, Moran finds a way to get to. Here's Nick Mangone digging for the puck with Drayson Pears, who comes away with it. He'll find his man on the far side boards. This will be dumped in by the marksman on to Brody Clays. Scooped up behind the net initially by the rail yard dogs, Brody Duncan. He'll get the puck on the near side half wall here, handcuffed with it, and just has to smack it down the length of the rink. Drayson Pears getting to it. Eyes Ustaski, but instead will skate it himself. Pears. Punches it down the near side wing. Ustaski will go to chase as he runs into his man. Brody Duncan finds the puck for the rail yard dogs. A head man pass goes off a marksman's stick. It'll make its way nonetheless to Billy Vizzo. He's knocked down by Ustaski, who will punch it back to his defensive core. Vincenzo Renda onto the puck here. Turns it up ice as the line will be held by C.J. Valerian. The rail yard dogs will fight for the puck in back. The goal, a hard takedown. We're going to get a penalty here. This is going to be a slash, and it's going to go against the marksman. 15 minutes to go in this first period. The marksman will go back a man down when we come back. You need to unmute yourself. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy-duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Sasha Wah will be the one to take the penalty for the marksman. is it was three, not eight, as I believe I may have miscredited that penalty before we went to break. Wah having a seat for slashing, and the marksman will go back to the penalty kill for the second time in this still young hockey game. But a good start to it off the near side glass and all the way out. Fayetteville leading Roanoke 1-0 on a goal from D.J. Jerome. As this will be taken by Nick Ford, he'll send it to the far wing, and Mac Jansen rims it in for the rail yard dogs. Marksman gave up one power play goal to Roanoke in yesterday's game. Top of the far faceoff circle, Matt O'Day spinning with it, will backhand to Nick Ford. Ford into the near side corner for Marcin Kavix. Up to the point, this is O'Day. Across for Jansen's one-timer that's kicked away by Brent Moran. High up in the air, Renda gets the puck, unable to clear. Mac Jansen hanging on to it, dangerous from this side of the rink. Jansen centers back door, and it's knocked away by Renda. 
A good defensive play that never allowed a shot to get through. Now Ford loads and fires. His shot blocked before it ever got to Moran. A bouncing puck to the near side boards, and this one will go all the way down for the Fayetteville marksman. 14 minutes to go in the first period. Fayetteville leading Roanoke 1-0. A long look up ice here by Jared Froman, who will step two. As the rail yard dogs will quick, quickly drive into their attacking end. To the far corner, Brady Hepner was looking to the far side point. And nobody was home, so Vroman has to backtrack to find the puck. Gets it to Billy Vizzo, but it's turned over. Now Glover to the far faceoff circle. A drive by McNair is punched out by Brody Clays. Glover finds the rebound, flings it off the outside of the net, and Roanoke will settle and bring it back the other direction. Vizzo into attacking ice. Centers but it's knocked away by Kale List, who is a scheduled scratch today, but is back in the lineup after the late arriving Andrew Lane suspension. Between the face-off circles, Vizzo gets it back at the far side wing. A cross-ice pass will be settled. Now Vroman, the top of the key, sends it to the far side boards. A low wrist shot is knocked down by Brent Moran. Out of the box comes Sasha Waugh, and Waugh will be the one to get the puck here. Waugh can scoot. The defenseman will jump up in the rush. He's by one man. Here's Sasha Waugh. Let's it go off the blocker side shoulder of Bodie Clays. And now this puck is deemed out of play as Sasha Waugh gets into some shenanigans on the far side board. Eustaski will come to join him as the officials are quickly in to settle this. Told you at the top of the broadcast, there was no reason to think that this wouldn't be a little more rough and tumble hockey game. It's proving to be that way so far. And you never know, this may be the way the Fayetteville marksmen are going to have to play. It's not the way they played last year. They could outskill a lot of teams, but it's been a fun first seven minutes and change with this team playing a little bit rough and tumble. This puck will be taken by the rail yard dogs off the ensuing draw. 12.35 to go first period, 1-0 Marksman. Alger unable to hold the line as this puck rims to the far side boards. Eustaski rides his man to the far side corner. Two by two, they'll battle there. It's dug out by Roanoke, and Marcin Kavix will find Nenadol. Josh Nenadol gets a round of Trey Phillips, who I thought had a good game last night. It was just difficult to see because... The puck was not bouncing in his favor. Here's a long drive, kicked out by Moran. The rebound off the far side goal post as Nenadol's bid is denied by the iron. Austin Albrecht will touch this one back out to center, but Trey Phillips is someone that Corey Melkert's very excited to have on this team, and you got to see glimpses of why. And if the puck luck is there, he's going to be a special player, not only defensively, but someone who's going to be able to contribute in pushing the puck into the offensive zone as well. Up the far boards, Alger takes this one off of his skate. It's a good change by the marksman not to take a too many men on the ice penalty there with Alger touching that puck as he's getting off. A good delay on getting that next man out. Off the far boards, McNair pull cues it to the far side wing. Taken here by Jerome as he punches it up to the point, driving his pairs. His wrist shot is blocked. Pairs will engage his man at the near side hash marks. 11-10 to go in the first period as the marksmen get it to the near side point. Kale List with a long shot off the end wall. Here's a drive just wide of the far side post as the end wall had been used as a bank for the pass. Vroman pressured by Matt McNair as Vroman will get it to Mac Jansen who has to reverse field to the far side wing as the rail yard dogs will look to settle the pace of play here. I think Roanoke has been surprised here early that the marksmen have come out with this much jump and fervor. And this is great for Fayetteville. You could not script a better start. The marksmen are dead even in shots on goal with the rail yard dogs, as you would expect, but they've got the lead now. Up the near side half wall. This will be scooped up by Brody Duncan. The rail yard dogs will find it. Ford smacks it into the attacking end as Trey Phillips is back to retrieve it. Phillips works to the far side boards and lost the puck as Brody Duncan will take it at the red line. That one was just scooped off of his blade. Dumped in around to Brent Moran as the rail yard dogs look to establish possession. Hepner behind the net loses possession. This is Trey Phillips looking up ice. He'll chip it ahead, and here comes Nick Mangone with it. Mangone, the furthest man up ice, was unable to find the puck, and C.J. Stubbs will get it instead. Stubbs. 
with a weak wrist shot that steered into the far corner by Moran. Stubbs looking for the rebound with Nenadal. Neither able to get it as the marksmen are back out to center. Taken ahead by Kyle Moore, who forehands it into the attacking zone. Now McCloy finds the loose puck. Backhands just wide of Albrecht, who will have to chase in the near side corner. Austin Albrecht. Reaching after the puck, stolen from him by Nenadal. Albrecht recovers on it, and now Austin Alger has it. Centering pass, score! It's McCloy, and that's a little history. He becomes the third all-time leading scorer in Fayetteville Marksman history on his second goal of the season. What a feed from Austin Alger, and the Marksmen are up 2-0. You will not see a much better goal than that this season by the Fayetteville Marksman. As this has been a welcome reception from this crowd to this Marksman team, and Taylor McCloy is on the board with his second goal of the season. Renda will give to Kale List, who sends it ahead to the captain McCloy. Near side, Albrecht, chopped ahead by Austin Alger, as that group will get off for a change. To the far side boards, Roanoke back out to center. Marcin Kavix ahead for Hunter Bersani. Bersani may have stepped on the puck and lost his footing. Here come the marksmen through center. Matt McNair lost possession of the puck as this will be driven in here by Valerian. His shot turned away by Brent Moran, who's looked really good to this point. Now the marksman on to it. To the top of the near side faceoff circle, a drive from Raiden is blocked. The Marksmen are unable to get it out, though. Now Dylan Raiden off of his skate and into the far side corner. As Moran will take care of the loose change. Here's Jarrett Cup spins it to Drayson Pears. McNair unable to get the puck as the Marksmen are discombobulated in their own end. Brought ahead as it's flipped end over end all the way to the Marksmen attacking goal line. It will reach it, and this is icing. We may not be done quite yet as DJ Jerome took a slash at the end of the sequence. Everyone skates away. Good start for the Marksmen here in Fayetteville. They lead 2-0 as we head to a commercial break. Save the date, November 12th. We're having our amazing Invisalign day with the best offers of the year. Not only will you get $1,500 off Invisalign treatment, you'll also be entered to win a $2,000 shopping spree with your choice of Amazon or Visa gift card just in time for the holidays. Please call today to schedule your free consultation for this one day only special. Your dream smile starts here. Seven fifty-four to go in the first period here from Fayetteville. The Marksman leading the rail yard dogs by a count of 2-0 on goals from DJ Jerome and Taylor McCloy. You could not ask for a much better start to this one, and I, for one, am super excited to see how this ends up for the Marksman. Face-off will be to the blocker side of Brent Moran. Who has not been tested often so far this period. And a false start off the face-off means we'll reset and do it all over again. Puck is dropped cleanly this time. Jarrett Cup has the puck up in his skates, stolen away by Broman. Cup will get back to it, but is unable to clear cleanly as Ford will hold the line. And now a shoving match right in front of the fans of the near side boards. Matt McNair rediscovering the feistiness that he had last season. In the end boards, Travis Broman trying to dig this puck free as he's tackled 
And DJ Jerome will find the loose change. Meanwhile, we've got a wrestling match behind Brent Moran. Everybody up and skating away as Ustaski's in onside. Lays it in back of the goal, and the marksman will go to work. Centering pass off the goal paddle of Brody Clays. A good battle for the puck, but that'll allow Roanoke to get it, and they've got numbers coming back. Here's Matt O'Day. He fires just wide of the far side goal post, and that puck is quickly right back out the marksman end. Scooped up by C.J. Valerian as his drive is taken down for a moment. And into the far side corner it goes with McCloy trying to dig for it. Centering pass by Roanoke's knocked free. And the marksmen get it up the near side boards with speed. Albrecht trying to make something happen as a hard hit delivered on the end wall by Austin Albrecht. I like the way Albrecht has played and really embracing the role here early for the Fayetteville marksman. He could be somebody that the marksman will look to lean on as the season goes on. Marksman right back out to center, but not with control as Roanoke starting to find that possession game that they were able to use in the second period yesterday. Stubbs around the kick plate to the far side boards for Persani, who overskated it. The marksman will get to it on the near side half wall here. Up the near boards, Roanoke with the change as it's dumped in by Billy Vizzo, who was knocked around by Matt McNair. Kale List hanging on to the puck. He was another one Corey Melkert mentioned, thought had a good game. List didn't play the most minutes in yesterday's contest. I thought the most noticeable part of his game, though, was how responsible he was with his decision-making, and that's one of those intangibles that doesn't always show up on the stat sheet. Jarrett Cup clears it in off Vizzo's skate. The marksman will have to regroup at center. Drayson Pears trying to dump it in. Banks it off the linesman, but here come the marksman nonetheless. Far side corner. This will be rimmed around. The marksman unable to hold the line as Albrecht gets a knock in on Billy Vizzo. To the far side boards. The marksman right back into attacking ice, but Roanoke sending it wide to Marson Kavix. He overskates the puck. And now both teams struggling to complete passes. Here's Albrecht at the red line. And he'll drop it back for Jarrett Cup, who swings to Drayson Pears far boards. His pass up ice is too shallow. And this will be icing with 4.59 to go in this first period. Timeout on the ice. We'll take it with him. 2-0. The marksman in the driver's seat. Hey. Hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Fayetteville Marksman leading the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs 2-0 through 15 minutes and one second of the first period. DJ Jerome and Taylor McCloy with the markers for Fayetteville. I think another bit that's not going to be talked about very much is the fact that the Marksmen have also taken two penalties in this game and have given Roanoke power play opportunities, and they've been all for naught. So this is turning into a really good Fayetteville penalty kill unit, and that can be a weapon that you can use in a multitude of ways. DJ Jerome onto the puck as he slides into the near wing for Albrecht, back for Jerome. Jerome, who has one already, stops on the far side boards and then is knocked to his knees as Nick Ford comes to find the puck. Ford to Mac Jansen, back for Ford, but he takes a shove. Ustaski's reach, unable to secure the puck in the zone, so the marksman will regroup at the red line. Mangone winds and fires this one all the way around the glass into the far side boards. A turnover, wrested off of a defender who was in front, and the marksman nearly had another. Near side boards, Phillips will let it go for Mangone. He loses the puck, and now a two-on-one for Roanoke. Hefner in, Deeks, and he lost the puck. Moran covers. Mac Jansen having a few parting words with Kyle Moore. So to emphasize this again, 
That instigation penalty carries a misconduct with it for Brian Moore. And I thought I tagged it, but I may not have. He'll be in for just a hair longer. This shot ricochets up into the crowd. That was over the protective netting. So the face-off will be to the glove side of Brent Moran. We'll do it all over again. Draw one cleanly by the marksman. This one's wristed off the near side class and out, but Jared Vroman is there for Roanoke. Vroman will dump it in. This puck bounces to Brent Moran. So he'll find Trey Phillips, who pushes to the far side wing. The marksmen are out to center, but Phillips is unable to hold the line. A rolling puck on the near side boards is backhanded to the rail yard dog defensive group, and here's a chance for O'Day. He drives in, he shoots off the blocker side shoulder of Moran. No rebound. That's Matt O'Day's game in a nutshell. If he's going to get an opportunity to drive, he's going to do it. And he and Mac Jansen both like to cruise down that right wing and see if they can throw it back to the far side post and get a friendly bounce or beat you clean. Jansen will come in to take the draw for the rail yard dogs. He'll go against Ustaski, and Roanoke has the puck, but it's immediately turned over. The far side wing, a headman pass for Albrecht will run too far as Roanoke trying to recover on this error. Here's Sean Leonard after he got fed some punches by Brian Moore just 27 seconds into this game. Snapped off the near side boards to Billy Vizzo, who will dump it into the corner. Leonard throws a shot, but is unable to get clean contact onto Drayson Pears. Kale List finds Pears, far face-off circle. A headman pass for Jerome is off of his backhand and deep into attacking ice for the marksman. 2.45 to go in the first period. 2-0 the marksman in the driver's seat. A headman pass, ricochets off the stick of Kale List, and it'll be brought ahead to Matt McNair. McNair driving with it as he'll drop for Ustaski, who fires a howitzer, caught by Brody Clays, and no rebound given. I'm really starting to like the game of Matt Ustaski, and I thought he played well yesterday, but didn't really have a lot of help. He's got that unique skill set that comes when you're six foot six and can outreach 95% of the players in the SPHL. But he's got some handles for one of the bigger players, too. And whenever you hear 6-6, I think the thought often goes to, oh, that's a big body defenseman. Oh, no. Matt Ustaski out of Glenview, Illinois, is a very talented forward. Draft pick of the Winnipeg Jets a few years ago. Up the near side half wall is Josh Nenadol for Roanoke. And the Rockaway Park, New York native will dump this one in while Hepner gets punished by Vincenzo Renda and Brent Moran covers the puck at the other end. I don't know how he did it, but it would appear that Corey Melkert has really thrown down a gauntlet going into this hockey game and wanted his team to show up early, and that was one of our keys to victory, and the marksmen have. Looking to finish the period as strong as they started it, though. Here's Jarrett Cup turning with the puck as he gets some help from Austin Alger, but it's not all the way out until now, and that was even off of a fortunate hop. C.J. Valerian clears it in as this was played with a high stick by Jarrett Cup. He knows it. The faceoff will stay at that near side circle in the marksman end. And this is where things get dicey if you're the marksman. You really want to go in with that two-goal lead. But Roanoke has been able to tilt the ice in their favor over the last couple of minutes. And they've got their top group out with Travis Broman centering. He wins it. Broman forging toward the net, a centering pass off the skates of Mac Jansen. And that's why you've got to be careful with this line out. Now driving up ice is Brian Moore after his trip to the sin bin. Moore on his backhand, leaves it in the goal crease. Scooped up here by Jerome, sets up Moore who fanned on the one-timer. And Roanoke will get it out. This is Mac Jansen. 
Two on two as they cross the attacking blue line. Jansen drops far face off circle. Here's a wrist shot well over top the crossbar. Valerian holding the line as Nick Ford gets to it. Centers for Jansen. Tried to roof it. Moran seals himself on the near side goal post. Now Brian Moore getting into Broman. Moore's lost a stick. Ford tries to pin him on the half wall. A lot of shoving being done here. As Fayetteville will get the puck to the far side boards and flip it out with a minute to go in this first period. 2-0 Marksman, and now we've got an arm up. And these are going to be matching minors. Travis Broman is going to go for Roanoke, I believe. And we've got a misconduct penalty. As Brian Moore is going back to the box. And is the unsportsmanlike on Moore? Taylor McCloy at the official circle awaiting it here, and Brian Moore may have just been thrown from this hockey game. Well, Mark Duncan is one of the more lenient officials in the league. And Brian Moore is back on the ice here, and he might not be done. Moore will head down the tunnel. And that was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty given, which is another 10-minute penalty, but that one looked like it carried an ejection with it if I saw the proper signal from Mark Dungan. And Taylor McCloy seems to be having an animated discussion here with Mark Dungan. And I can't say I blame him because it didn't look like there was much there physically. And you would imagine that whatever Brian Moore told Mark Dungan was just the right combination of words to get the heave-ho. Up on the scoreboard... It's a two-minute penalty to Broman and a two-minute penalty to Brian Moore. Those will be the matching minors. And Kyle Moore will have to come in for the second time in the period and serve his brother's penalty. So Brian Moore may have an early night here in Fayetteville, but the fans have very much enjoyed seeing him. And if that ends up being the night for Brian Moore, he's done his job. He helped spurn this team to a quick start. To the far side board, scooped up by Roanoke, a long drive as Moran got railroaded by the passing Brady Hepner. Now Sean Leonard has a hold of Sasha Waugh. They're going to let him go. Those two have a hold of each other's jerseys. Mark Duncan's looking right at it, and it's going to be let go. Austin Albrecht. Driving around, he centers through the goal mouth, nobody home, and Drayson Pears finds the rebound for the marksman. He's engaged from behind by C.J. Stubbs. Albrecht is there, and now Leonard will peel the puck away. Sean Leonard up the near side boards, lays it in as Drayson Pears gets a knock in on him. Here goes Sean Leonard. It's well defended by McCloy as Leonard has a few extra shoves. Mark Dungan is looking right at this, and there's going to be nothing as now Leonard's going to get called for stepping on the stick of Sasha Waugh at the end of the period. So some antics by the one who's known for them at the end of the frame. And Kyle Moore wants to know more about what's going on here as he'll have a discussion with Mark Dungan. A little bit of old-time hockey here in Fayetteville, but the home crowd loves it. They also love the fact that the Marksmen have a 2-0 lead through 20 minutes of play. Shots on goal through the end of the first period for the Marksmen 12 and for the Rail Yard Dogs 11. What a period. Coming up during our first period intermission break, we'll recap the frame, tell you about the goal scores, and we'll also hear from our non-profit of the night, the USO of North Carolina. This is Marksman Hockey. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world. 
of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Save the date, November 12th. We're having our amazing Invisalign day with the best offers of the year. Not only will you get $1,500 off Invisalign treatment, you'll also be entered to win a $2,000 shopping spree with your choice of Amazon or Visa gift card just in time for the holidays. Please call us today to schedule your free consultation for this one day only special. Your dream smile starts here. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light Legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Hey. Hey, you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Have you been hurt? <laughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. We welcome you back inside the Crown Coliseum. Drew Blevins with you. It's the Fayetteville Marksman holding a 2-0 lead over the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs, a period that the Marksman needed to have last night. It never came, but here it is, a fantastic start to this hockey game. It's an early goal that comes after a Brian Moore fight. DJ Jerome right off the faceoff, his first of the season. Jerome was so close to having one in last night's contest. Good to see him get on the scoreboard. And then as the game progresses on, the Marksman and the Rail Yard Dogs both have chances, but it's the captain, Taylor McCloy, who scores a historic goal with his second goal of the season. He becomes the third all-time leading scorer in Fayetteville Marksman history. That goal comes from Austin Albrecht and Austin Alger as the two Austins get on the score sheet for the first time this season. And though the Marksman, I thought, did not finish the period as crisply as they would have liked. I still think that there's a lot of positivity to take away from the period that was because the marksman 
took a lot of their weaknesses last night and turned them into strengths. I loved the fact that they were playing a physical brand of hockey. I loved the fact that they were able to find a way to score early and score often and get to Brody Clays. But now it's a matter of finding the groove again and staying in it. It's a Roanoke team that's best period yesterday was the second when they were able to make adjustments after they outshot the marksman 8-3. to three. Well, now they have an opportunity to come back, and if they can score three again, they're going to be right back in the driver's seat. So this one's far from over for Dan Bremner and company, but certainly a great start by this Fayetteville marksman group. And that will be something that you can build on, not only going into the final 40 minutes of this game, but also going into the rest of this season. Folks, we'll step aside for these messages from our corporate partners. Coming back on the other side, we'll hear from our nonprofit of the night, the USO of North Carolina. This is Marksman Hockey. Hey. Hey, you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Marksman! Have you been hurt? Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Welcome you back inside the Crown Coliseum. Drew Blevins now joined by one of the officers of the USO of North Carolina, Brian Knight. Brian, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. No, Drew, thanks for uh, thanks for having us out here as the nonprofit at night. What a what a great night to come out. An opening night crowd and, and certainly a great hockey game, but I want to talk a little bit about the USO of North Carolina. For the fans who are listening in, tell us about what the USO of North Carolina does, some of the work that you guys are doing, and what the overall mission of the USO is. Sure. So the USO of North Carolina, actually it's USO, but um, USO North Carolina, um, we service 
our service members and our family. We're congressionally mandated to take care of our active duty service members and their family, and we do that by keeping them connected to family, country, and home. So uh, anywhere that the soldiers are d deployed, um, we've got USO service, USO volunteers and employees there supporting them. And when you look, USO North Carolina, the USO as a national organization has been around for quite some time. You look at many historic World War II photos of the work the USO has done. What does the day-to-day -day look like for USO North Carolina in the modern day now, supporting soldiers of the 21st century? Yeah, sure. So majority of you know um, of our World, World War II generation knows USO as as shows overseas or or in Vietnam taking the entertainers, but and, and Bob Hope. You know, we're we're so much more than that. Um, you know, here at Fort Bragg, we service the most service members, you know, on one installation. Um, and and it's America's 911 being at Fort Bragg. So, you know, when the president picks up the phone and dials 911, it rings right here at Fort Bragg. And, and we've seen that throughout the, the four years, you know, the last four years, our service members getting called on no-notice deployments. We are right there with them uh, as they are heading out the door, providing them with, with hygiene kits, with snack packs, stuff to build morale. Uh, and then we're doing a handoff with wherever it is that they are their final destination. Um, so we're with them all the way. And then while that's going on and the service members are deployed, we have tons of programs that are going on to not only take care of the service members that are back here, but as well as their families. It's tremendous work that you guys do supporting the soldiers of the U.S. military. I want to ask you, is it an organization that people can volunteer for? How does the general public get connected with USO North Carolina? And how do they help you guys in your, miss in your mission to serve the active duty soldiers? Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question, and I appreciate you for asking it. Um, bottom line is, we cannot do what we do without our volunteers. So USO North Carolina has has 12 employees. The rest of it is volunteers, and we have over 700 volunteers across the state. So if anyone is looking forward or looking to um, you know, volunteer, um, the easiest way to do that is either go to uh, volunteers.uso.org, or they can do it super easy. Everybody's got an app now, right? So uh, so go to USO Volunteers mobile app, build the profile. And we've got places that they can volunteer all across the state. Um, and and we have tons of events going on constantly. So if somebody even, even only has four hours a month that they want to donate, donate their time, um, we'd love to have them because we cannot do what we do without our volunteers. They are the backbone of our organization. And before I let you go, I want to get one last glimpse at your calendar. What are some of the events that you guys have upcoming as we speed toward the holidays and then begin to turn the calendar over to a new year? Yeah, well, um, you know, we're going to partner with you guys for the Salute to Service games, uh, every Sunday game. Um, definitely looking forward to doing that again this year. Um, the big thing that we're prepping for right now is our Santa's Workshop. Uh, we'll bring 300 military families um, into our Santa's Workshop, do some arts and crafts, do some, uh, some good giveaways with them. And I want to tell you, um, these fans don't know it tonight, but as they're getting ready to, I see them walking up, getting ready to do the parachute drop. Um, Three lucky fans tonight are going to win tickets to tomorrow night's Carolina Panthers and Tampa Bay wow. Bucks game um, just by this parachute falling into their lap. So we've got a special little message on the back of the card. They'll bring it up to redeem it. So I'm super excited about being able to just, um, you know, send them to the game tomorrow. That's going to be some awesome stuff. Could be a whole sports weekend for some lucky families who are out there. Brian, thanks so much for coming up to join us. Glad to have you here tonight. Yeah, Drew, thanks a lot. And you're doing an amazing job calling this game. So. Thank you so much. That's Brian Knight of USO North Carolina, our nonprofit of the night here with the Fayetteville Marksman. We'll be right back after this break to go for a quick spin around the rest of the SPHL. This is Marksman Hockey. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. 
Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Save the date, November 12th. We're having our amazing Invisalign day with the best offers of the year. Not only will you get $1,500 off Invisalign treatment, you'll also be entered to win a $2,000 shopping spree with your choice of Amazon or Visa gift card just in time for the holidays. Please call us today to schedule your free consultation for this one day only special. Your dream smile starts here. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light Legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Hey. Hey, you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. We welcome you back to Fayetteville. Drew Blevins alongside you as the Marksmen are back on the ice and looking to do a little bit more damage as we approach this second period of play. Before we do that, though, let's go for a quick spin around the SPHL as we've got a full slate of action going on this evening. We'll start things off with a game that's about to drop the puck in Evansville as the Knoxville Ice Bears will take on the Evansville Thunderbolts a little bit later on tonight in the central time zone. Bur uh, Birmingham is in Vermilion County, Macon in Pensacola, and the last game of the night is Quad City and Peoria as those two teams will trade places after a really, really good hockey game between those to yesterday. Second period puck drop is next here in Fayetteville. Marksman leading 2-0. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Ready and raring to go for period number two here in Fayetteville. As we are underway, the Marksmen leading the Rail Yard Dogs by a 2-0 count. DJ Jerome and Taylor McCloy have the goals for the Marksmen. And Fayetteville looking for a little more here as we remain in a four-on-three situation. Now, here's something that's off. There is no other penalty on the board. It's Sean Leonard for slashing at the end of the frame. The Marksmen have a four-on-three St. Peter Pest Control power play, but it's not on the clock. Here's Albrecht, lets it go, bounces into Brody Clays, and he'll cover the puck. Thought the Marksmen did a really nice job of getting after Brody Clays early in this hockey game, and I'll be interested to see what Clays' response is And now the penalty has gone up on the scoreboard. That's a strange one. And now we've got the officials going over. And, and that's exactly what the situation is. Bob Belcher is the director of off-ice officials here for the Fayetteville Marksman. And he's got Mark Dungan right in that scorer's hole. Those two have become best friends over the past 20 minutes. 
with the penalties that have been assessed here early. And now you've got to do a little bit of mental math here. 19.25 to go in the second period. And a minute 35 to go on the Leonard Miner. So here's Phillips quarterbacking the power play as Austin Albrecht will get the puck at the bottom of the near face off circle. Turns it to Phillips who swings to the far dot. Held here by Alger, who goes to Albrecht, his one-timer, caught by Brody Clays, no rebound. That's a good stop by Brody Clays on the Albrecht drive. And now Mac Jansen has words for Mark Dungan. And... I think this is going to be, there should be 10 fewer seconds on the Leonard penalty. And he's right. He's absolutely right. There's a minute 20 on the penalty clock. And with only 50 seconds gone by in the period, there should be a minute and 10 seconds left on the penalty. So what is been assessed here by mistake is a two-minute, ten-second minor. There is still a minute 20 on that penalty clock, and it may be a situation where the officials are going to go. When the game clock hits 18, Sean Leonard's coming out. Brian Moore is still in the game after the misconduct penalty. So he and his brother remain in the penalty box where they've been for most of this game. And we are being halted ostensibly because the penalty clock is wrong. And I understand that this is a situation that you want to see get resolved, but th this is quite easy. 18 minutes, Leonard comes out. And we are still stuck at the scores table. This is strange. Well, I'm at a loss for words here because it, it would seem like this should not take this long. So that is the case. It is, it is quite the issue with the scoring system as has been passed along to me. Finally, it appears we have the penalty all set. We are ready to go and play hockey again. That's what I haven't seen. And that is where the old light bright scoreboards might be a little bit more receptive than today's digital technology, which undoubtedly looks better. Phillips to Alger, his one-timer blown wide. Alger has his own rebound, knocked off the stick by Hepner, And this one is all the way out and down to Brent Moran's end. 
Marksman going after it hard. Travis Broman will take the puck instead for Roanoke, though. The Marksman get it back out to center, but Jared Vroman is there waiting. Vroman turns and fires this one back down the near side half wall. All the way back for Brent Moran, who will leave it for Trey Phillips. Here's Phillips. Gets to the middle blue line. Zips it to the near side boards. McCloy leaves it for DJ Jerome. Intercepted by Dylan Radin and iced. Moran now. Wants to shoot it himself. He does, but right to Dylan Radin. He's going to control this one. Let it go. And DJ Jerome, who has a goal in the game, will bring it up ice to the far side wing. This is just snapped forward. It's Matt McNair goes after the puck. He's run into by Vroman. Jared Vroman getting tied up with Taylor McCloy. As this puck's off the far side half wall. Nick Ford has it. Ford gives it up, but Jared Cup intercepts it. Slides it through the middle to C.J. Valerian. He coughs up the puck, but Roanoke has men there. And this is Jared Vroman behind his goaltender. 17.45 to go in the second period. We return to even strength. The lone man in the penalty box is Brian Moore serving his misconduct penalty, the second he's taken of the game. Snapped up ice off the stick of Mac Jansen. This rolls to Brent Moran, and he'll melt the puck with no more fuss. Let's talk a little bit about Brent Moran, the Orleans, Ontario native. We did not get to preview the starting goaltenders as we normally would have with another replay of the fight between Moore and Leonard on the Jumbotron. Moran joined the Marksman in January of 2022 during last season's campaign, won 16 games for the Marksman of that span. Here's a chance off the draw. Moran seals at the far side goal post and makes his biggest save of the night. But off Moran's 16 wins, he got every start in the playoffs, played well in game one, played well in game two and took the marksman all the way to the bitter, bitter end. It's the Quad City Storm eliminated Fayetteville. But an outstanding guy, one that's easy to pull for, former draft pick of the Dallas Stars. There's a hard hit on Nick Mangone as he's run into hard. I believe that was Igor Kostyakov in the lineup tonight who made that hit. Kostyakov trying to earn his spot as well, played most of his career in the Federal League. Turned over, and now Nick Mangone is on his horse. No icing as Roanoke was the team to send it down to their own end. Now quickly pushed up by C.J. Stubbs as he'll drive on it here. Stubbs run into by Drayson Pears as this puck will work its way to the far corner. Mangone gives it to Taylor McCloy who will look up ice, and McCloy will dump it in down the far side boards. Clay is out of his net to play it, sends it to the near side half wall. Brought ahead by Brody Duncan, who is pinned to the near blue line by Austin Albrecht, and the fans will love that. Austin Alger pressuring Leonard, who has also been a pest in this game. Ahead to Hepner, who will send it to the far side corner. Kale List is there. For the marksman is List, fights through some contact with Leonard. Kale List sends this puck high up in the air. It rolls on him for a moment. As Roanoke and Fayetteville have two people in the corner, dug out free, and the marksman will be the team to find the loose change. Sent down the far side boards by the marksman. This is going to be icing as Vroman was the first back and no change coming. This is critical. 15.38 to go in the second period. It's a tired group out there for the marksman. Alger, Albrecht, McCloy with pairs and list. Face-offs won by Roanoke as it's a long wrist shot that floats well wide of the far side post. Taylor McCloy trying to dig this puck free. It'll be taken instead by Roanoke at center. Vroman. Looking to dump it in. He's unsuccessful initially. A diving Hunter Bersani got a skate to it to knock it in deep. Centering pass is blocked. The marksman to it, unable to get it out. Held by C.J. Valerian, whose shot is in on goal. Caught by Moran, no rebound. That's one where I think you'd like to see C.J. Valerian have the presence of mind to keep the shot low and try to generate some traffic. But that has not been the best skill set for this Roanoke defensive group. 
Faceoff will be to the glove side of Moran. And it's a draw that is kicked around for a few minutes, eventually taken by Roanoke, a centering pass off a skate. Moran seals himself at the near side post for a huge save. Roanoke looking for the puck, they've got it. The rail yard dogs send it up to the near side point. Vroman, this will be wrapped around. Valerian trying to hold. Travis Broman is there to hang on for the rail yard dogs. Dumps it around the kick plate to the near side half wall. Renda unable to get it out as Broman and Vroman are able to dump it back in. Marksman will try to break it out up the far side boards. Nothing doing there. One more chance for Fayetteville. Chipped ahead to DJ Jerome. Two on two. Here come the Marksman. Everybody somehow stays on side. A delayed penalty upcoming. It'll go against the rail yard dogs. This is going to be a slashing penalty against Roanoke. And the Marksman go to the St. Peter Pest Control power play when we come back. 14-23 to go in the second period here in Fayetteville. Two nothing Marksman. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Fourteen twenty-three to go in the second period here in Fayetteville. The Marksman leading the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs 2-0. I'm Drew Blevins alongside you for this one. You heard Brian Knight of USO North Carolina mention it earlier, worth bearing mentioning again that there are a couple of vouchers for Carolina Panther tickets that are on the line here tonight. So this face-off will be taken to the glove side of Brody Clays. Penalty is against C.J. Valerian for slashing, and the marksman are on the St. Peter Pest Control power play. 0 for 1 on the night. T.J. Jerome has it near corner, gives it up for McNair as he feeds it all the way up to the point. Trey Phillips gives to Matt McNair, who will take a long shot. Score! <laughs> Matt McNair with a floater that beats Brody Clays. And the Marksman lead 3-0. Mercy. It's Trey Phillips who sent the pass low. It came back up to McNair. And that is quite the goal. That's McNair's first of the season. It'll come from Glover and Phillips. And it is a 3-0 lead for the Marksman as Clays looked to play this out, but was unable to do so quickly enough. My, oh my. Pardon me, the assist will go to Mangone and Phillips. Nick Mangone rather quickly working his way into a night-in, night-out spot with this group, I'd imagine. Marksman looking for more, but this one's just tipped outside the blue line. And looking for more, M-O-R-E, it's Kyle and Brian, have their respective seats. Moved quickly ahead toward Austin Alger. This puck is intercepted, and the marksman will head back on defense here. Headman look from Brody Duncan, just chipped into the zone by Hepner. In the near side corner now, C.J. Stubbs for Roanoke. Digging with the puck. It's knocked free to Josh Nedadal, who slides it low. Paddled away by Brent Moran. The rebound scooped up by Sasha Waugh. Nenadal took it from him. Centers in front. Here's the takedown. And this is going to be a penalty against the marksman as Sasha Waugh will take a seat for tripping. Roanoke will get a chance on the power play again. They are 0 for 2 tonight. That's 
That's a good hustle play by Roanoke, though, to draw that penalty and get Waugh in a situation where he had his stick out a little too far and took down his man. The Roanoke power play has been abysmal in this game. Here's a centering pass. Jansen lost it, and it's cleared by the marksman. Brody Clays will leave this one out as Roanoke will bring it right back up the ice. Set to the far side boards. It's the rail yard dogs just looking to get something going offensively. It has not been their night. Punched ahead to Matt O'Day. A centering pass rolls in toward Marson Kavix. This will be cleared all the way down the length of the rink. And Brody Clays out of his net to touch it along to Matt O'Day. 45 seconds gone by in this marksman kill as the rail yard dogs are quickly back ahead. Through skates, Jarrett Cup will chase the puck far side corner. The first there is Broman. Backhands to the point for Sean Leonard, who turns back for Travis Broman. Now Jansen near face-off circle to Sean Leonard along the blue line. Leonard zips it across the rink. This will be held for a moment by Nick Ford. Four forwards and one defenseman out. Here's Leonard. He will shoot it. He lets it go. As Brent Moran knocks it down. Rebound in front. As the marksman will get to it. Broman held up his man. McCloy gets to the puck, and he'll send it all the way down. Sometimes you get those defensemen on the power play that just will not let the puck go, and that's not Sean Leonard's game. He is not afraid to uncork one every now and then. And we'll see how this rush starts as this one is popped up and out of play by Leonard. Eleven thirty-three to go in this second period. Marksman leading 3-0. One goal scored in this period from McNair on the power play. So the Marksman will have the puck up the near side boards here. This is Mangone. Zipped right back up ice as this will be driven ahead. And laid all the way around the boards by Brady Hepner. Out of the box is Sasha Waugh. This puck is sent to the near side wing for C.J. Stubbs. Wah will watch him closely as Stubbs sends it to the far side. Point long wrist shot, they score. Jared Vroman on the long drive from the point puts it in for Roanoke. The shutout bid is broken, and the rail yard dogs are on the board. Well, this was a series this weekend has been characterized by guys that don't normally score. Jared Vroman's one of them, and he'll have his first of the season on that seeing eye wrister from the point. It's Jared Vroman makes it 3-1, and now the marksmen look for an answer. Alger. Lost the puck, but Matt McNair is there to recover. He centers, this is stolen away, and Marson Kavix lost possession of it, so the marksman will find it far side boards. Trey Phillips will zip it up ice as Alger will find Matt McNair. Driven low as McNair separated from the puck. Trey Phillips knocks his man as the marksman Trying to hold the line here. This is Alger. Will punch to McNair. He centers through the goal mouth. Nobody home. Alger has the rebound. Looking for Jerome. He got clipped in front. And the marksmen are right back out. This is Marcin Kavix driving in. Renda took the puck from him. And now they go spinning into the near boards. Puck is stuck in the corner. We're just beyond the halfway point of this hockey game. Rail yard dogs will search for the puck and find it near side half wall. Jansen. Backhands to O'Day. Matt O'Day trying to hang on to the puck here. He's watched by Vincenzo Renda. Shoved off the puck initially. And now up to the point, Bersani. He's taken down on a play by the marksman below the knees. And that's been twice now that we've seen a couple of clips that have not been called. 9.20 to go here in the second period. 3-1 the marksman in the driver's seat. 
up the far side boards, puck intercepted. Fayetteville resets. McCloy holding, looking for a lane. He's forced behind the net. Taylor McCloy hangs on to the puck, and now he centers. A chance for the marksman in front. Everybody sweeping at the puck. Kyle Moore unable to get a stick to it as this puck ends up behind the net. Moore now reaching out with Austin Albrecht. Neither of them able to hang on to the puck, and this one is all the way out. Kale List will go to find it. List from the far side boards spins into the middle of the rink for Kyle Moore, who found initially McCloy. Rail yard dogs will send it up the far side half wall as Ford has the puck, has to retreat as the rail yard dogs were offside. Brody Duncan touches up the near side half wall. This is Jarrett Cup with it. Cup turns and lets one go, but it never made it to its intended destination of Nick Mangone. To the near side wing now, Brody Duncan unloads a pass all the way down the far side wing. This is Jarrett Cup with it. Cup. Sends it up the far side half wall. This one ricochets off of a skate and now brought ahead. Nick Mangone with it. He centers off of a rail yard dog skate. And now we've got a penalty in the back play. It'll be against DJ Jerome for slashing. And the marksman will go a man down when we come back. 3-1 marksman, 8.03 to go in the first period. Save the date, November 12th. We're having our amazing Invisalign day with the best offers of the year. Not only will you get $1,500 off Invisalign treatment, you'll also be entered to win a $2,000 shopping spree with your choice of Amazon or Visa gift card just in time for the holidays. Please call us today to schedule your free consultation for this one day only special. Your dream smile starts here. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. We welcome you back to Fayetteville, North Carolina as the Rail Yard Dogs find themselves on power play number four. The penalty kill for the Marksman has been sharp up to this point as they have held Roanoke scoreless. DJ Jerome off for slashing. And the Rail Yard Dogs are into the attacking zone offside. 7.43 to go in this second period. Good crowd here in Fayetteville, one of the more memorable opening night crowds here in the Crown Coliseum, and that is outstanding. Really shows the growth of this marksman group. So the Rail Yard Dogs will bring it out from their own end. Top power play group is out. Sean Leonard will quarterback it as Roanoke is into the attacking zone. Held on to by Billy Vizzo up the far side boards. Vizzo knocks it down for Hepner and back for Dylan Raiden. Raiden. Loses possession as this will be dumped in off the far side glass. A rolling puck scooped up by the marksman as they'll punch it up the near side boards. Out she goes. Nick Mangone carrying this puck ahead for the marksman. Mangone hanging on to it here as he tries to pin it on the kick plate and kill time and does for about five seconds before it's jostled free. Up the far side half wall, here come the rail yard dogs. That's Dylan Raiden, who has not seen a ton of ice time tonight. Lost the puck to Mangone. Mangone back one-on-one -on -one against O'Day. Unleases a long wrist shot. That'll be caught. And Mangone getting into it with O'Day at the end of the sequence. As Brody Clays will hang on to this puck. Thought it was very telling that Dan Bremner went back to Brody Clays in this hockey game. And Austin Rodebush was the scheduled starter. Clay's played well enough to earn a second start. You appreciate a coach that's going back with a guy that he knows, likes, and trusts. But Dan Bremner has not been an all-star manager of goaltenders in his career. And if you go back to last year, the Marksman chased the Roanoke starter in three of four games, and it was musical netminders there for a while. Near side corner is Dominic Marcin Kavix. Backhands to 
Matt O'Day is the rail yard dog, set things up, 19 seconds to go in their power play. Here's a shot through traffic that ricochets high. Kale List jockeying with Travis Broman for position. Knocked ahead to O'Day. Matt O'Day sends it to Dominic Smarson Kavix. The Latvian at the top of the near faceoff circle. To the near side goal post as Broman will walk it off. A backdoor pass, nobody home. DJ Jerome's out of the penalty box for the marksman. 5.59 to go to second period. A backdoor feed to Marcin Kavix goes wide of him. Jerome backhands it up the near boards and out. Penalty kill unit will get off for the marksman as they are a perfect four of four today. And what you'll take away from that is you just wish you hadn't taken four penalties to this point. Smacked into the near side boards as the marksman will chase it. Brian Moore off of his second misconduct penalty, will feed Vincenzo Renda. Backhands it off the far boards. Renda will go jockeying with his man. That's Leonard. Those two run into each other as this puck bounces off the outside of the net. Scoop back up here by the marksman. Held on to by DJ Jerome, run into by Marcin Kavix. He's hauled down. Rono coming away with the puck for a moment. Marcin Kavix lost it, centering pass to Brian Moore. Fumbled with it for a moment, and Roanoke's out. Beyond the red line, here come the rail yard dogs. Dropped for a drive from Nenadol that's blocked in the way through. Marcin Kavix on the rebound. He drops it back for Valerian. His drive punched away by Brent Moran. And now a chance up ice for the marksman if they hurry. A hard takedown as Jerome got tied up with Marcin Kavix. In the near side corner, Jarrett Cup into the attacking zone. Backhands to Matt Ustaski. Using that reach, Ustaski is unable to pull Q it away. So the rail yard dogs are to the puck. Broman moved it up ahead, but Brian Moore is there to jump the route. Brian Moore is ahead. He's got speed and has victimized this team before. Moore lets it go just wide of the far post. Kale List comes to find the loose change. List centers off of the Roanoke body. This one's chipped out of midair. Great hand-eye coordination by Austin Alger. Alger onto the puck for the marksman, lost it to Hunter Persani, who then sends it wide for Jared Vroman, who was roughly taken down. Austin Albrecht on the far boards for the marksman, gets some help from his defensive core to lay it deep into attacking ice. Roanoke now struggling to break it out as Stubbs centers the puck. This one does not make it beyond the blue line as marksman hold the line. That was Trey Phillips who jumped into the play, but nobody was home to help him. So Roanoke is right back into attacking ice. Bersani runs hard into Austin Alger. He's up a little ginger after an awkward spill into the boards. Drake Glover punished as he crossed the defensive blue line. Roanoke's got it. Raiden lets it go. Phillips registers a shot block as Kale List tries to find the loose puck. Instead, it's Drake Glover to come away from this. Glover... Had his name called more in these first two games than almost any other marksman player, maybe except McNair. Here's a drive off the body and out of play. 3.15 to go in the second period at the Crown Coliseum. The Fayetteville marksmen have a 3-1 lead. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Well, the Fayetteville Marksman have answered the bell in this hockey game and that was something that they had to do and they have done quite well at it and after an embarrassing performance last night the marksmen have a two goal lead with three minutes and 15 seconds to go in this second period Brent Moran has logged 18 saves and he is out dual Brody Clays who to this point has only registered seven on ten shots So the faceoff will be to the blocker side of Brody Clays. This puck will be scooped up to the far side boards and rimmed all the way in. Around to the far side corner is Kale List. Will knock it up ice for Nick Mangold. Taken by Leonard. His bid is punched away by Brent Moran. Loose puck works its way to the near side boards. Here's a drive through traffic. Moran may have gotten a stick to it. 
The rolling puck will be stolen by Kale List. Looked at McNair for a moment. List does just punch it ahead, and now a two-on-one brewing. Albrecht with man going, going. He feeds him, but Brody Duncan gets in the way. It's Duncan's best play of the game up to this point, and a meaningful one. So the face-off. Win for the rail yard dogs results in nothing, and you see just how critical it can be to have players that can get up ice and out quickly. Dumped in by the rail yard dogs. Renda will pick up the puck. It takes an awkward roll on him and is settled by the rail yard dogs. But an awkward bounce off the rough ice will send it back out to center just south of two minutes to go in the second period. Here's Duncan. Feeds it to the far side boards. Hard hit delivered. That will slow down the attacking C.J. Stubbs, if only just for a moment. Stubbs gets the puck back up to the point. Fed low as this is Hepner walking. Hepner wraps around the net to the far face off circle. Here's a shot. Moran swallows it. And now traffic in front. And the marksman will take exception. Josh Nenadal, who's in the grill of Brent Moran. And Nenadal is the short, stubby forward who has proven to be a linchpin for this Rail Yard Dog organization. Face-off will be to the glove side of Brent Moran, and it is won by the marksman. Backhanded to Brian Moore, who will zip it all the way down to the attacking face-off circles as Roanoke will go to chase. This is Igor Kostyakov, who will find Matt O'Day back for Kostyakov up the far side boards. Kostyakov turns the puck over to Ustaski, who gave it right back. Kostyakov using O'Day as an outlet as Matt O'Day spins away from pressure. Ustaski is there. Kostyakov and O'Day struggling to get this out. Finally, they do. This may be a chance down the far side wing. It's Hepner on his backhand. He was affected by Trey Phillips. A centering pass stolen by Brian Moore. He struggles to settle the puck. It now finally will. Brian Moore will drive up the near side half wall. Moore pushing his way through to McCloy. Now McCloy, force wide, drops it back to the point for Brian Moore. Feeds Kale List, the defenseman, who will touch it to McCloy, and the marksman captain will dump it below the goal line for Ustaski. The puck hops over his backhand, and now Ustaski being muscled on by Dylan Raiden. Dominic's Marcin Kavix will take the puck two on two. Here comes Roanoke. Marcin Kavix may have a lane, drops a pass looking for Vroman, who gets tied up with Ustaski, and now McCloy has one to Brian Moore. Moore using his frame to hold the puck. Zips a pass to Austin Albrecht as this one's behind him. Roanoke will get to it. This is Billy Vizzo behind the net for Jared Vroman, and the rail yard dogs are content just to let the clock roll out. Both teams pot one in the second period. The Roanoke rail yard dogs come away with 10 shots on goal for a game total of 21. And I'm going to have to double check this. The Fayetteville marksmen have only logged 10. And on my math, that would mean they did not have a shot on goal that period by the judgment of the off-ice officials. Marksman will look for a little more offense, but enjoying a strong opening period. They have a 3-1 lead. We'll be back to recap it right after this. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. 
save the date, November 12th. We're having our amazing Invisalign day with the best offers of the year. Not only will you get $1,500 off Invisalign treatment, you'll also be entered to win a $2,000 shopping spree with your choice of Amazon or Visa gift card just in time for the holidays. Please call today to schedule your free consultation for this one day only special. Your dream smile starts here. Some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light Legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Hey. Hey, you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Have you been hurt? <laughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. We welcome you back inside the Crown Coliseum. Drew Blevins with you as the Fayetteville Marksman have a 3-1 lead on the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. A hockey game that was dominated at one point by the Marksman, and since then they have relinquished all of their momentum, but they still have the lead. Officially, what that ends up being is three shots on goal for the Marksmen in period number two. It's the second straight night that the Marksmen have had just 10 shots through two periods and three shots in a single period. That was not pretty last night, but there's been more offensive success here this evening. And I'll be interested to see if that matriculates into a win tonight. You still have 20 minutes to go. The marksman got better in the third period. But it's going to take a Herculean effort to hold off this rail yard dog group. The marksman took a 3-0 lead early on in that period with Matt McNair's seeing eye power play shot. Just a snap wrister set up by a feed from Nick Mangone. And I don't know if Brody Clays didn't see it or lost his balance, but Matt McNair was as shocked as anyone that it went in. For McNair, it is his first goal of the season. Remember, Matt McNair at one point was the leading goal scorer for the Fayetteville Marksman last year, especially when that team went through the injury rash in December. So he's a valuable goal scorer and one that I think is going – to be poised for a breakout here, but Roanoke finds a way to answer. A shot from the point from Jared Vroman beats Brent Moran high, and that's just a fortunate seeing eye shot. You throw enough things at the net, sooner or later, one is bound to go in, and that ends up being a massive goal for the Rail Yard Dogs, who find themselves down two going into the second intermission break. And, you know, I would wager that the two to three goal difference is probably the most important in hockey, and the rail yard dogs have been able to cut that deficit down to somewhere that they're going to feel a lot more comfortable. But for the marksman, Brian Moore will start the period on the bench. He is going to be usable for Fayetteville for the rest of this game, barring another penalty, and that will go a very, very long way. Coming up on the other side of this break, we'll take you to our Ask the Voice segment, where we'll take a couple of your questions right up here in the broadcast 
broadcast booth. This is Marksman Hockey. Hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Have you been hurt? Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> But really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Welcome back to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Drew Blevins alongside you, the Marksman Radio Network and Hockey TV. The Fayetteville Marksmen have a 3-1 lead over the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs, but we're going to step out of that game for a moment. We're going to go into the booth so we can answer some of your listeners' submitted questions from right up here in the broadcast booth during our Ask the Voice segment. Our question tonight comes from Bill, who is listening in Red Springs, North Carolina. Bill wants to know... When you add Brian Moore into the lineup, what are the biggest factors that change with someone like him? And this is a great question because I think there's a misconception here that Brian Moore is, is someone who, who is just brought in to, to do a job, just to fight, just to score. Whatever you think of Brian Moore's game, that it's ultimately a, a one-dimensional move and you just get a really good hockey player to play for you. And that's not the case because what Brian Moore is bringing more so than anything else is he's got experience, he's got leadership capability, and he knows what's going on outside of just the game of hockey. He knows the nuances, and that's why when you see somebody like Moore or McCloy or 
Ustaski or Moran, guys that have played hockey at a high level or have played hockey for a long time, when they get agitated, you take note because they know what they're talking about. More somebody who's played in a lot of leagues. He's been in NHL training camps. He's got great ability, and yes, he's going to help you on the ice. He's going to aid in the toughness factor. He's going to do a lot. But I think the biggest thing is that he's a guy that's brought in because he can produce while younger players learn from him, and that goes a long, 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 long way. So thank you to Bill and Red Springs for his question tonight. If you want to have one of your questions answered on a future edition of Ask the Voice, please email me at dblevins at marksmanhockey.com. That's D-B-L-E-V-I-N-S at marksmanhockey.com with your name, where you're listening from, and a good question about hockey or the Fayetteville Marksman. After this break, we will take you around the SPHL and the world of sports. This is Marksman Hockey. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce. Because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Save the date, November 12th. We're having our amazing Invisalign day with the best offers of the year. Not only will you get $1,500 off Invisalign treatment, you'll also be entered to win a $2,000 shopping spree with your choice of Amazon or Visa gift card just in time for the holidays. Please call us today to schedule your free consultation for this one day only special. Your dream smile starts here. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy-duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Hey. Hey, you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Have you been hurt? <laughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. 
We welcome you back to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Let's go for a quick spin around the SPHL. We'll start things off at Evansville where the Knoxville Ice Bears and the Evansville Thunderbolts have just dropped the puck. They're scoreless, also just starting Vermilion County and Birmingham are knotted up 0-0. Dropping the puck in about five minutes, Pensacola host Macon, and in about 15 minutes, Quad City and Peoria will square off as the Peoria Rivermen will have their banner raising ceremony a little bit later on this evening as the Rivermen are the defending champions. The world of college football, the Alabama Crimson Tide leading Mississippi State as the Tide look to rebound after their loss to Tennessee. And in the ALCS, uh, this is not a good one. In the middle of the eighth inning, the Houston Astros leading the New York Yankees 5-0 as the Yankees find themselves on the verge of being eliminated and yet another year without a Yankee World Series appearance. We've got a great hockey game brewing here. Delighted to have you with us. Third period puck drop is next. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. You can hear the crowd roaring. You can hear the crowd roaring here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. 20 minutes to go, and the marksman in the driver's seat with a 3-1 lead. Face off won by the marksman. We begin the period on even five on five terms. Brent Moran looking for what would be his seventh win over the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. As this one has dumped the length of the rink, icing against the marksman. Moran has not lost to Roanoke since joining this marksman team. And the importance of that I don't think can go unnoted. Brent Moran has been a stalwart in net. Looking for his 17th SPHL victory. Here's a quick snap wrister. Moran takes it high off his chest. Jarrett Cup to the loose change. And if you're the Fayetteville marksman here, the other thing you want to find is a way to make the life of your netminder easier. Jason Pulaski got hung out to dry on a couple of occasions yesterday. And you heard Corey Melker talk about it, and I think you have to echo the sentiments. Pulaski was not the problem. He played really well yesterday. It's just when you're giving up 37 shots and you only have 22 on net, you're not going to win very many hockey games. And Brent Moran nearly looking at that same clip as the Rail Yard Dogs are out shooting the marksman 22-10 in this game. Roanoke has the puck. This is Sean Leonard, who has had a notable first two games of the season, both from a physicality standpoint and from the standpoint of making his way out of the score sheet. Dumps it into the attacking zone for C.J. Stubbs as the rail yard dogs chase it down. Taylor McCloy digs it out for the marksman. Feeds it up ice, but this is turned over, and the marksmen are lucky to survive that one as Alger thought he had a man behind him, and he didn't. Picked up by Drayson Pears, who wears the number four that was previously occupied by Don Oliveri. Finds his way up to Austin Albrecht as this one will roll right into the middle and into the near side corner. 
Up the far side boards, Pears knocked off the puck. McCloy there for support. Drops it to the far hash marks. Here's a one-timer by Pears cut down. And the puck got stuck between the legs of Alger and is cleared all the way down as Alger was getting off on a change. Two minutes gone by here in the third period. As Drayson Pears will have the puck in back of Brent Moran. Pears fires it off the far side boards, looking for Mangold. This is intercepted, and Mac Jansen will play it to the near side wing for Valerian, who one touches up ice for Marcin Kavix. Marcin Kavix removed from the puck as it'll be scooped up by Ustaski to the far side boards. Matt Ustaski found a man there. Brian Moore will chase the puck into the far side corner. This will bounce around. It is eventually cleared the length of the rink by Roanoke. Marksman, the first team there. Jarrett Cup spins away from pressure. Turns it off the near side boards to Ustaski. Feeds it to the far side wing. Driving in here is Mangold. Overskates the puck. Everybody resets. Hard hit delivered on the far side half wall. A rolling puck touched up ice by Valerian. Now here comes Roanoke. This is Dominic's Marcin Kavix with a puck on edge in the far side corner. He's rocked, but will leave it in space for Mac Jansen. Jansen is watched by Sasha Waugh. It's picked up by Ustaski. Matt Ustaski for the marksman up the far side boards. Took a cold shoulder as it's turned down the far side boards. This is Leonard. Finds Nick Ford who turns with it, holds, fires, the shot is blocked. Nick Ford has had some tough sledding offensively tonight. Ford getting the puck here, is, takes a hard shoulder, Broman rolls it toward the net, this is loose in front. Sasha Waugh there to help clean it up as McNair turns it up ice. There's a hard hit and this is gonna be a penalty as Jerome got clipped at the knee and Roanoke will go a man down. DJ Jerome has been on the brunt end of some rough stuff here, and now Sasha Waugh will have a few more words for Brody Duncan. Duncan for tripping, and that very easily could have been a kneeing call, and the marksman will go to the St. Peter Pest Control power play once again, 0 for 2 tonight, or 1 for 2 tonight. Face off to the glove side circle. Brody Clays and the marksman will set things up. Brian Moore and Trey Phillips playing along the point. Phillips works to the far wing and now will turn to Brian Moore. Deeks around one man at the near face off circle. Backdoor pass and a great stop by Brody Clays. That one might have been a dagger if it had gone in, but Brody Clays with his best save of the night will keep us at 3-1. Phillips. Skates ahead for the marksman. He'll turn and give back. Brought ahead by DJ Jerome. Jerome holds off one man, turning with the puck here. Jerome fires to Drake Glover in the far side corner. He'll find Trey Phillips. Phillips walks to Brian Moore, top of the near circle. Moore around one man, holding, gives to Glover, who's got a lane, lets it go. That one ricochets off Brody Clays over the crossbar. Phillips unable to hold the line. Maybe a shorthanded chance for Nenadol. He's going to opt not to take it, dumping it in behind of Brent Moran with 15-15 to go in the third period and a minute gone by in the marksman power play. Moore lost the puck. Moran will recover to Brian Moore, gives to Jarrett Cup, and that one was nearly catastrophic. New unit out for the marksman. A long stare up ice by Jarrett Cup before pushing to Austin Albrecht. Centers and calls for it back. Albrecht looks to fire. The puck rolls off of his tape. Albrecht trying to recover, and now a chance the other way. Here's the rail yard dog, shorthanded. Stubbs charging the net. He's held off as Jarrett Cup takes care of his man that was Hepner in the far corner, and the marksmen are back out to center. The near side half wall. This is Ustaski. Pushes it into the near side corner as Taylor McCloy engages his man there. McCloy. Sends it up the near side half wall. A good pinch here by Cup to hold the line for a moment. Now this is sent all the way down with a little bit of extra zizz on it. And Ustaski, excuse me, Albrecht will have to settle. He's knocked off the puck by Nenadol, who then turns it over again as the power play comes to a close. Jarrett Cup pushed away from the puck as the marksman will charge ahead. This is Matt Ustaski. Holds, fires a little wrister that misses wide of the near side post. Marksman to the rebound. Spun below the goal line for Ustaski. He's in trouble and double teamed. Roanoke getting to the puck, but Mangold steps in front of it. 
Now Nick Mangold looking to center to Kale List, the defenseman who had jumped ahead. Marksman pressuring the puck here. They've got it back, and they are offside. A puck that went over the blue line and back a couple of times, bouncing around. And with 13.40 to go in the third period, we will take immediate timeout. Marksman leading 3-1, looking for their first win of the season. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Thirteen forty to go in the third period. The Fayetteville Marksman looking for their first win of the year. And there would be nothing sweeter than having it come against one of your bitter rivals. It's been a defensively minded period. So the Marksmen have two shots on goal and the rail yard dogs only the one. O'Day feeds it down the far side boards. This puck intercepted high in the air. Drake Glover is able to bring it down. And this will be peeled back for Igor Kostyakov. Spent time with the Columbus River Dragons as well as the Delaware Thunder in the Federal League. Ripped all the way around the boards as this will roll beyond the reach of O'Day. He'll have to go back into his own end to collect it. Matt O'Day. Feeds it up ice as Drayson Pears had the puck for a moment. Instead, D.J. Jerome will turn with it. Jerome, toe dragging, holds at the far face-off circle, leaves it for McNair, who fires a slapper into the gut of Brody Clays. No rebound. Face-off will be to the glove side of Clays. McNair will go against Bersani, and McNair wins another face-off. He's been so good in the circle. Moore centers to McNair through the goal mouth, and McNair unable to get the tape on it. Picked up by the rail yard dogs. Marcin Kavix will drop for a shot from Sean Leonard that is blocked before it ever made it to Brent Moran. In the near side corner, Leonard. Hammers Matt McNair twice. McNair hauls him down. We're going to keep going. Let's go, Marksman is the chant here. Billy Vizzo turns it into the middle. This is a rolling puck that will eventually make its way deep into the Marksman attacking zone. Well, the breakout at some points in this game has gone sideways for both of these two teams, as it does here for Roanoke. Alger. Down the far side, boards, looking to center back into the middle, and nobody was there. So the marksman will reset and look to go 200 feet. This is Jarrett Cup in his own end. Cup with a long look up ice. Just gives it to McCloy, the captain, and he'll feed it all the way down. This is tailor made for Brody Clays to cover, and he will with 11.32 to go in this third period. Face-off will go to the glove side shoulder of Brody Clays. McCloy against Hepner. McCloy wins it, but here's Josh Nenadol. Nenadol down the far side boards. What a move. He got around one man but lost the puck. Everybody's swinging for it. Marksman have it. This is Jarrett Cup. The defenseman is the furthest man up ice, and he's going to lay it forward for the forward group to go chase for the marksman. Roanoke will take it instead. Up the far side, half wall. Rail yard dogs back into attacking ice. A centering pass and a quick snap wrister by Stubbs. Blocked. Marksman can't clear. Now Nedadal with a drive off the catching side shoulder. Brent Moran, the puck still free. This is Trey Phillips on to it. Phillips 
Sends it to Austin Albrecht, and he'll drop it back for Taylor McCloy. Lays it into the attacking end and will get off for a change. 10.45 to go, third period. Marksman leading the rail yard dogs 3-1. Corey Melker told us that he was uninterested in the wins and the losses right now. He wanted his team to play hockey the right way as Moran will cover the clear-in attempt by Roanoke with a gathering of people right in front of Brent Moran. Travis Broman exchanging words with Nick Mangone. Mangone, feisty, has an assist in the game. Faceoff will be to the blocker side shoulder, Brent Moran. It's a draw that's won by the rail yard dogs. A long drive through traffic, steered up into the glass, off Moran's stick. Marksman trying to get it out, and they do with a hard hit. Delivered by Mangone. This one just does reach the goal line, and a tight foot race goes to the rail yard dogs. This is icing. Marksman playing a really good brand of hockey defensively tonight. Looking to get things going with the offense now. Face off to the end wall. Drayson Pears, along with Kale List, trying to dig it out. This rolls across the red line. I'll be smacked off the near side boards, backhanded along to Eustaski, as it'll instead be taken by Sean Leonard. Up ice it goes as Broman avoided what would have been a huge collision with Drake Glover. Marksman get the puck. DJ Jerome drops it to the far side faceoff dot. The Marksmen are back into attacking ice. A drive through traffic as Cup is able to get it toward the goal mouth. It's loose in back of the net. Clay's fortunate to get a skate to a slow roller that was heading toward the goal mouth. Take down in the back play as Brian Moore got the better of Sean Leonard and got away with it. Brent Moran directing traffic vocally as he will send it to Jarrett Cup, and this is a headman pass to DJ Jerome, and his stick fails him. A hard pass that snaps the blade clean off the twig, and Roto gets the puck as a result. Bersani. Dumps it to Dominic's Marson Kavix. Centers, Billy Vizzo wraps it. Moran's ceiling as the puck misses him. And now Moore's got a chance. Brian Moore with speed, pressured by Broman. Moore in, lifts it, shoots, he scores! How do you do? Brian Moore makes it 4-1. to one. And that's the skillful differentiation there. Oh, mercy, what a finish. Beats Jared Vroman. Pulls the string and lets it go. No chance for the Roanoke netminder, Brody Clays. It's 4-1. to one. Marksman may be looking for more. Here's a drive that's just over top the net by Austin Albrecht. Rolled into the near side corner. Sasha Waugh is pinned there. As this one banks its way up to Austin Albrecht with a pair of assists this evening. Albrecht. Across the blue line here, whistle blows. The marksmen are offside. Eight minutes to go in the third period. Brian Moore gives the marksmen a three-goal lead. It's all Fayetteville, 4-1. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. 
St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. The Fayetteville marksmen are eight minutes away from securing their first win of the season against the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. Face off in front of the Roanoke penalty box, which has been vacant for most of this game. The marksmen do have a power play goal on three chances tonight. Brian Moore overcoming two misconduct penalties. He's going to be the league leader in penalty minutes by the end of the night when this game goes official. Ford driving around Moran. Gives it up to the point for a low snap wrister that bounces into the near side corner. Rail yard dogs have been stymied offensively all game. and I think this is a marksman group that has really embraced the defensive philosophy, but just 14 shots on goal to this point, and this will be a stinger for Brody Clays' stats. Brought ahead by Fayetteville and dumped in by Kyle Moore, who will get off on a change. Kyle Moore has not seen the ice as much as his brother tonight, but has been stuck serving a couple of penalties. Here's a bouncing puck for DJ Jerome. Toe drags with it, is unable to get around his man. That's brought up ice on a huge hit on Billy Vizzo by Matt McNair. I do not believe the physicality is over in this one. High wrist shot, rims around the boards to Jared Vroman, who will play it into the near side corner. This is pool cued around by Trey Phillips, and Jared Cup has it. Cup knocked around for a bit, but is able to kick it free to Brian Moore. He'll chip this one all the way up ice. This is going to roll, 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 just shy of the goal line. Clays is going to settle it. It will keep going, and this is where the marksmen want to live for the rest of this game. That clock keeps rolling. The marksmen are in great shape. It will roll to Brent Moran here, and he'll melt it. 6-18 to go, third period. 4-1 the score. The Fayetteville marksmen leading the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. Marksmen are next at home in two Saturdays, November 5th against the Macon Mayhem. It'll be SpongeBob night here at the Crown Coliseum. Should be a lot of fun as we go under the sea with SpongeBob and friends. And then the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs are back in town after a wacky road trip for them. They'll host Fayetteville on Friday. Then they'll go to Knoxville before riding the ship and coming east. Dogs on the puck here. This is Valerian around his man. Look to drop to the middle. This is stolen by McCloy, and up ice it goes. Held on to for an extra beat by C.J. Stubbs and pushed to the far board south of six minutes to go in the game. Kale List feeds it to the far side wing. That was Alger. He lost the puck, and Roanoke may have a chance. Centering feet knocked away by Brent Moran with help from List. List smacks it off the glass. What a bounce this takes. It's all the way down to Brody Duncan, who's between his defensive faceoff circles. Rimmed in by Mac Jansen. We're going to keep a sharp eye if Dan Bremner is feeling frisky and wants to pull his netminder down three. 5-10 to go in the third period. Mac Jansen down the near side boards. I would imagine Roanoke would have to score one more for that to be a thought. Here's Ford, tried to elevate the puck. It's knocked down and will be taken by Ustaski. Feeds the far side wing. Now with speed, driving is Mangold. Backhands it off the far side leg pad of Brody Clays as Jared Vroman Falls making a play to knock the puck away, but it could be a chance. Here's Nick Ford in. He shoots. Moran makes the save. He takes a spill. The net dislodged, and that'll take us to our final media timeout. 4.41 to go in the third period. Marksman firmly in control. Hey, you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? 
you can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Marksman! Have you been hurt? Tired of feeling... 441 remaining here in Fayetteville. Fayetteville marksmen looking to eschew the demons of last night and get back to their winning ways against the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. They beat them 11 times last year and looking to continue the streak. If they can complete this one, it'll be winning eight of nine. A backhand pass to the front. This is smacked away at the last second. As Brian Moore was lurking right in front. Hard hit delivered on the near side boards by Leonard. Those two are back at it again. DJ Jerome shielding as Leonard has the puck. Is he's double teamed. Leonard has to just smack it into open space. A good pinch by the marksman defense. Leonard has a hold of McNair. This is going to be a penalty on Sean Leonard. Leonard still leaning on McNair, and a little bit of justice will be served here on 66 as holding will be the call against Sean Leonard. So a St. Peter Pest Control power play upcoming. as Sean Leonard will take a seat. He's frustrated. Slamming the penalty box door and trying to keep it closed. Marksman may look for a little bit of insult to injury by adding one more. Far face off circle, a low snap wrister just wide with Glover right in front. Brian Moore gets roughed up by Nenadol. Here's a centering feed, they score! And now the question is, is it Glover or McNair with the goal? Glover's first through the line. This is going to be one of those passes that takes an awkward cairn and into the back of the net. We're going to see if we can look at it on replay here from the broadcast angle. Oh, my. What a bounce. It's Glover's goal. His centering feed went off the stick of Jared Vroman and in. And if it wasn't done before, that'll just about do it. Fed to the far side of the rink and dumped in by the marksman. Slapped toward the front of the net, Broman in front. McNair will get an assist on the goal, but Drake Glover, the man of the moment, as the marksman power play has put two in tonight. And the sweetness factor there is it came on a penalty taken by Sean Leonard. And the marksmen are going to have a resounding win, one that will still bring questions of things to build on offensively. So the marksman... Right now being outshot 27-16 by their opponents from Virginia's Blue Ridge. But the Crown Coliseum showed up and showed out for this one. Fans have been entertained all night. and Well, folks, you might as well get the paint brushes ready. So the Mark's been prepared to paint this one black and orange. Here's Man going to the front. He gets a swipe in on Clays. And now O'Day along with Eustaski. Man going is there. He's got Brody Duncan. 
Oh boy, this could be a serious altercation. Everybody's got someone of the opposite uniform. Kyle Moore in it. Pulled away, Mangone there, Ustaski, Brody Duncan, Travis Broman, Nick Ford. Dan Bremner is going to be frustrated at the end of this one. His offense has had chances and hasn't been able to put the puck by Brent Moran. Mercy. Roanoke will win the draw. Everything seeming perfunctory at this point is you just want to get out of this game with little more damage inflicted if you're the rail yard dogs as they'll be sent back licking their wounds after this one. Both teams in this series this weekend get a serious pride check as Brody Clays will hold on to this one, and we're going to get some more shoving. This is Kyle Moore and Brody Duncan. Mark Duncan, Ryan Salkeld, and Shane Bemis have had a long night. But that's what you expect in a game like this. And the patrol is out with Brian Moore, along with DJ Jerome and Matt McNair on the ice. Roanoke from behind their own net. Just looking to charge ahead south of 2.30 to go in this hockey game. As it's sent to the far side boards, it's a 5-1 lead for the Fayetteville Marksman. Drake Glover with the most recent goal. Brian Moore with the most highlight reel goal. And now we've got some talking between the benches. Dan Bremner and Corey Melkert are right at the divide between the benches. Fans are egging them on, and now there's a fight right along the bench sideboards. Sasha Waugh has a hold of his man. That's Sean Leonard that he'll take on. Brian Moore and Josh Ninadal come together, and Corey Melkert and Dan Bremner still continue to share words. Sasha Waugh. A well-known tough customer. And Sean Leonard is going to be escorted off the ice. His night is done. Corey Melkert with a mock applause to Dan Bremner. This game has had a little bit of everything. Sasha Waugh's night might be done as well. Jason Pulaski will open the door for Waugh. I tell you, I have seen it before in my career, and I don't think it would happen in the SPHL, but stranger things have. There for a brief moment, I thought Dan Bremner might be coming across that stanchion. And, and the problem is, Corey Melkert was a well-known, hard-nosed defenseman in this league. I'd take Corey Melkert versus just about anybody. And I, I don't know, Corey Melkert might have three or four good hockey games left in him. He is in really good shape, but... Dan Bremner leans much more on that pane of glass. It's going to come crashing down on the trainer, Kyle Sherrill, who is well over six feet tall and is a former offensive lineman at Methodist University. So good luck with that. And they're still having words between each other as the officials look to sort this out. Four thousand thirty-one in attendance at the Crown Coliseum tonight, and they have been entertained from start to finish. It started fast. It's going to finish 
with some tough stuff. And, and this is this is all right because it's going to shake out to be five on five after all the hullabaloo and conversation. That's absolutely correct. The only players that you could penalize there are Sasha Waugh and Sean Leonard. They both deserve to be penalized after trying to shed the gloves. But that's all of that. Here's Nedadol with a drive, blocked by Stubbs partially. Now Moran comes up with a huge save, and the marksmen get the puck out of their defensive zone up the near side boards. Roanoke retreating down to their own end. Dan Bremner and Corey Melkert with a sideways glance every now and then. The last game before COVID-19 shut down the SPHL between these two squads and there was a full-scale brawl. And oddly enough, that was on SpongeBob night, which the Marksmen will celebrate here in a couple of weeks. Shades of old not quite coming true here. Here's Brian Moore with the puck. He centers to man goal and a backdoor pass. Slammed on goal and Clays knocks it away, sealing nicely in the butterfly. Minute to go in this one. And the rail yard dogs enter the attacking zone offside. Fifty-four seconds officially remaining. No reason to think about pulling the goaltender. Face off from in front of the marksman bench, won by the rail yard dogs. They'll retreat into their own end. Both teams humbled this weekend. The marksman took it on the chin yesterday but they have delivered a crashing blow to the rail yard dogs. The marksmen will take eight of the last nine in this series. It'll be their first win over the rail yard dogs of the season. This one's curled to Eustaski, knocked away. Hunter Persani brings it up ice, clearing it in to the final 20 seconds. Kale List holding his ground here as the marksman will get to the puck, sent off the far side board, suckered right back in by the rail yard dogs. Drayson Payers is tied up. Five seconds to go, one last shot. Moran says no. Marksman to the puck, they'll clear it out. Hope you're ready for this one. For the first time this season, you can paint it black and orange. The Fayetteville marksmen have won five to one. And that's exactly how the marksmen want to respond against their rival. And this one is a big one. 5-1 the final score here from Fayetteville, North Carolina. We'll be right back with marksman postgame after these messages. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Fayetteville Marksmen get their first win of the season by disposing of the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs by a final count of 5-1. to one. 
This was a hockey game that the Fayetteville Marksmen needed, and they got at the right time a massive, massive win for the Marksmen 5-1. It started quickly in the first period, and the Marksmen didn't let up. D.J. Jerome opened the scoring, and then Taylor McCloy with a goal that makes him the third all-time leading scorer in Marksman history. That goal comes 11:39 into the first period. We would be 2-0 at the end of the frame where the Marksman had actually outshot the rail yard dog 7-6 in the first period. And then one of those second periods to forget if you could manage it. So the Marksmen find themselves scoring again on a seeing eye snap wrister from McNair, but that was nearly all the offense in the second period, all the way to the midway point of the third. Roanoke got their lone goal in the second period from Jared Vroman. And that would be all she wrote for the Rail Yard Dogs. Brent Moran stymies this group offensively, and a fantastic showing for him. Moran ends the game with 28 saves on 29 shots, and Marksman fans are very glad to have him back in the lineup this season. Taylor McCloy, though, with a goal and an assist, is our number one star of the hockey game. Brian Moore had a goal as well in a couple of fights. And this is just a, a hard-nosed win for the Fayetteville Marksmen, and one that they are going to thoroughly enjoy throughout the course of this week going into their Friday matchup against the Knoxville Ice Bears. Final stats for you, the Fayetteville Marksmen go four for four on the penalty kill. They go two for five on the power play. They end the game with 18 shots and five goals. The Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs 0 for four on the power play, three for five on the penalty kill. They end the game with 29 shots and the lone goal. We hope you enjoyed this weekend series and get ready because there's more of it coming in two weeks when the Marksmen will head back to Roanoke on Friday, November 4th, and then they will host the Rail Yard Dogs here for the first salute to service Sunday of the season. Folks, that'll do it for us here on the Marksman Radio Network. We hope you enjoyed this one as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Until next time, I'm Drew Blevins. Enjoy your evening. Painted black and orange. The Marksman win 5-1.